Now, we can't all be the uh, <clears throat> pillars of social and ecological justice, because of the seven billion something people on this planet we call Earth, there are a few idiots out there. Unfortunately, due to political correctness, there isn't a little tick box on your dive paperwork where you can self-identify as an idiot and be automatically disqualified as a scuba diver. We unfortunately have to qualify them. So yes, there are idiot scuba divers in the world too. Most scuba divers tend to be more aware of ecological effects and do their hardest to avoid contact or affecting the undersea world, but the idiots just seem to be happy to stand on the reef, break off a piece as a souvenir and, I don't know, punch a dolphin. That's what I like to do in my spare time. I'm sure the dolphin will punch you. You've got that medal. <laughs> In this video, we're going to be looking at the darker side of diving. Not the cool tech diving, but the idiot divers out there and their pretty ill-conceived escapades. Here are five idiotic scuba diving stories that we don't condone or, you know, recommend you attempt at home or anywhere, really. Oh God. I, I have a strange feeling that there's going to be a few sighs in this video, I'm afraid. These idiot divers were actually arrested for riding a whale shark uh, and uploading a video on social media. Divers in Indonesia came across a juvenile whale shark in a national park and did the most logical thing that their tiny brains could think of and latched onto it. So this poor little shark had to take them along for a ride. Uh, one of the group recorded the idiots and being an idiot themselves, uploaded it onto the internet where I can only imagine they didn't think anybody would ever see it. But unsurprisingly, the Liverpool company banned them from diving, well done, um, and local authorities used the very handy video footage of them that they uploaded to identify the divers and then arrested them. <laughs> now, I couldn't actually find whether they have been charged with anything yet, but if you have heard anything through the grapevine, uh, do let us know. But yeah, don't go riding whale sharks. But punching dolphins, that's okay. Don't do that neither. Four divers planned to dive to 40 meters, but for unexplained reasons, two of the group ran extremely low on gas after just reaching their maximum depth. The article states that the divers were all instructors, but somehow two of them had burnt through all of their gas, either through equipment malfunction or maybe exertion, it doesn't quite say. They actually did the right thing and turned the dive around, heading for the surface, but at just 30 meters, all four tanks had run out of air. Uh, once this occurred, they all performed what can only be called as a deep seizure uh, to try and make their way back to the surface, and one suffered from a spinal bend, which sadly left his legs paralysed, but the article didn't really mention how the other three divers fared. So there's a couple possibilities here. Either the group weren't actually instructors or even experienced to dive these depths because they didn't bring enough gas. Uh, they never checked their gauges, either at right start of the dive, they had nearly empty tanks, I can only imagine, or they had such high breathing rates they actually emptied their tanks within minutes, or some kind of equipment malfunction that affected all four of them at the same time. Uh. Either way, check your gauges and always bring plenty of gas with you on a dive. So we've all probably seen Stand By Me. Well, this story comes from Girls That Scuba. Anyway, back to Stand By Me movie. One of the protagonists in the film regales a story that they call Lardass. Uh, and this is where the Girls That Scuba parodies. Uh, sudden onset seasickness affected this poor girl on a boat or a rib, it doesn't quite say. Uh, but this poor girl did what she thought would contain her explosive regurgitation. However, it only seemed to funnel it into the face of the diver opposite her. <laughs> Covering her mouth, yeah, basically it came between her fingers and um, yeah, it splashed him in the face. Um, the other diver did what any normal diver would do or any normal person when sick splashes on your face. He threw up too. That caused a chain reaction because you know, when you see sick or you smell sick or you feel sick, you are sick. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it now. Be sick. Just, just that sound of that kind of like lumpy splatter. <laughs> <laughs> 
always reminds me of a school trip where someone was sick. <laughs> but it was in a clear plastic bag and there was like this red cherry in it. And the, <laughs> that one, that's always stuck in my head. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, Carry on breathing. If you suffer from seasickness, always remember your medication and avoid surface time as much as possible. Try to end the dive as close to the exit as possible so you spend as little time bobbing on the surface. Back when I was a DM, I was sheepdogging a DPV course. At the beginning of the dive, we all descend down to a platform about seven meters down to check all of our gear, make sure everything's working. The instructor gives the go ahead and then off he goes for everyone to follow. The first buddy pair moves along quite swiftly as does one of the second buddy pair, but the last student who hasn't adjusted their buoyancy is just left standing there holding onto their DPV expecting him or expecting the DPV to lift him off the ground overweighted. So he's basically just kind of stood there just uh, for a long time. It really didn't register for him. So needless to say, he could have dropped a couple kilogo uh, kilograms from his weight belt, but he basically forgot to adjust his buoyancy at all. Uh, and he just kind of stood there just eh, not going anywhere. You know, let people know that it was actually you, Mark. No, no, because I then swam over and told him to adjust his buoyancy, and then we continued the dive. Your DM swam over. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Perfect scuba diver. <laughs> For legal reasons, we have changed this student's name from Sam to Samwise. Mark! Um, Samwise was on, well, Samwise was one of my students um, and she was on her advanced open water course and doing her navigation where you basically need to use a compass to swim a square and return to where you started. The dive site was, uh, it had particularly awful visibility at the time which is actually perfect for navigation because you can't cheat, you can't see where you started so you're kind of reliant on your compass. So Samwise starts off well swimming north, 10 fin kicks, turns 90 degrees and then heads west, 10 fin kicks again, turns south, 10 fin kicks, and then for some unbeknownst reason, decides to swim west again instead of east. So the technique was perfect, however, instead of swimming a box pattern, Samwise decided to swim in an open box pattern. Well done, Samwise. Uh, later that very same day, Samwise almost floods one of my own torches, um, handing one of my button-operated torches to Samwise. Um, she sees me twisting the head of my torch to switch it on, and she, of course, naturally copies, almost opening the battery compartment of the torch that I'd given her. Well, she did qualify, she did qualify. Yeah, well, so what stories do you have? Remember to change names for legal reasons. Thanks for watching and safe diving. Yeah, you do such a great job with that, don't you? <laughs> Bye, Sam. <laughs> we are an online dive store serving the UK and the world for all your diving equipment needs. So why not visit us at simplyscuba.com or click the box on your screen.